From the family grocery hauler to fire-breathing racing engines, the one name you need to know is USA Motor and Machine, located at 51 Cleveland Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. Give them a call at 615-726-3725 or at usamotorandmachine.com. Today's show is brought to you by locally owned and operated Highland Rem Speedway. Highland Rem Speedway is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year with great short track door-to-door -door stop car racing in a safe, family-friendly atmosphere. Visit their website at highlandrim.com. There are only 16 teams left playing football in the state of Tennessee on the high school level, and after Saturday night, eight of them will be going home happy. Plus, 11 athletes have been named Tennessee Titans Mr. Football in the state. Six of them will see action this weekend. Hi, I'm Joe Williams, and coming up next with my special guest, Maurice Patton, we're going to take a look at all eight games in the Blue Cross Bowl coming up. That's next as we finish our journey on the road to Cookville. Jeff Meeks and Chris Austin invite you to watch your favorite sports event at the Batter's Box at 43 Hermitage Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. The Batter's Box offers shuttle service to all Titans home games. It's a great place for friends to gather for the game and after the game. So check out the Batter's Box Bar and Grill, and thanks again for sponsoring the show. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. From the family grocery hauler to fire-breathing racing engines, the one name you need to know is USA Motor and Machine, located at 51 Cleveland Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. Give them a call at 615-726-3725 or at usamotorandmachine.com. And welcome in everybody to the next to the last edition of the Road to Cookville. I'm Joe Williams, along with my special guest, Maurice Patton. And Maurice, been a big week for high school football. We are down to the final two in each classification. Plus, they started off this championship week uh, naming the top 11 football players in the state of Tennessee. You got to be there for that, too. I, I did. It was a um, pretty impressive sight to see some of those guys that um, not just the winners, but some of the finalists that were there. 33 finalists, 11 winners, and um, a lot of kids had some awfully good seasons this year. I was going to say, there have been some great performances this year, and you got to figure out just amongst yourself that when you get uh, all the players in Tennessee down to 33, and then you got to cut them down to 11, boy, that is tough to do. Tell you what, let's take a look at the winners in the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards for the state of Tennessee. We'll open up first in Class A, Maurice Will McCamey. Out of Grace Christian Academy, suffered the injury late. Almost got him through an emotional time as uh, he came back to the sidelines, but uh, still wins as the back. The lineman, Tyler Cohen out of Gordonsville, who will be seeing action this week. In uh, AA, Christian Academy in Knoxville swept both sides. Charlie High as the back, Brett Kendrick as the lineman. A lot of folks talking about Charlie High and where he goes next. Yeah, exactly. Charlie High was... Um won this award last year as well, plays in a very prolific um, passing attack there at CAK, plays for Rusty Bradley, whose um, dad is former Tennessee assistant Mark Bradley, and um, Rusty has done a great job up at CAK getting that program up and going, and, and they are a pass-happy bunch. Um, <laughs> they beat um, they beat Milan 49-14 to last year um, in the finals, and, and Charlie threw for all seven touchdowns, I believe, and um, He's thrown for about 4,800 yards this year. I mean, he was going away the favorite in that in that over, again, a, a pretty tough field. But um, to win that thing two years in a row speaks volumes about the career that he's had. And like you said, um, what he does next is is going to be something to watch here over the next couple of months leading up to um, signing date in February. Somebody's going to want him off. Several want him awful bad. In class AAA, Jalen Hurd out of Beach, the – Back, Austin Sanders out of Bradley Central, the lineman. This may have been, in my mind, uh, the the back porch anyway, the toughest of the bunch. You got Mark Dodson, who set a, a, a career record or a single season record in Memphis for rushing yards. You had uh, Brent Stockstill down at Siegel, who has been a fantastic quarterback all year, and the performance that he gave. Uh, you know, you talk about leaving it all on the field the other night against Maryville and almost pulled out the victory. 
you know, I'm glad I didn't have to make a decision between the three of those. Unfortunately, you know, postseason performance doesn't really figure into the voting. But um, like you said, you had three, for lack of a better word, you had three studs up yeah. for that award. Um, Heard was the only junior, and when I spoke to him afterwards, he expressed a little surprise at the fact that he was selected over two seniors. Mark Dodson, who is already committed to Ole Miss, as you said, um, has set rushing records in Memphis, plays on a loaded Whitehaven team that's going to be playing for the um, 6A championship this weekend. And Brent Stockstill, as you said, um, came back from the knee injury he had suffered in the quarterfinals and, and almost willed Siegel past Maribel. Um, through for what 376 yeah. something like that on one knee basically I mean it's a it's a knee that's gonna have to have some surgery here in the next couple of weeks and he's done that type thing for that team all season long and um, you, it's one of those classic you hate to see somebody lose kind of things but um Heard had a whale of a season this year and and will be playing on Friday night in the 5a championship as well in Division 2A, Todd Kelly out of Knox, the, the Webb School of Knoxville, Knoxville Webb, but Kelly, kind of a familiar name. Chase Hensley out of University School of Jackson, the top lineman. Kelly, of course, his dad goes back to the UT days. And in Division 2, AA, not a big surprise, Corn Elder, the back for the second year in a row. Uh, both of these came home to Middle Tennessee as Derek Barnett out of Brentwood Academy picked up the Mr. Football Award for line play this year. And uh, kicker goes to Knoxville Fair, gets Jonathan King. Now, I'm going to say this really quick and get this over with. And that is, I asked you this the other day. We have eight classifications in football in the state of Tennessee. Why do we only give five awards? I'll leave that for another day to well, argue. Well, I'll, I'll take a quick I'll take a quick shot at trying to explain it though, because during the regular season, that's the way we play. Okay. We don't get to eight classes really until the playoffs start. Okay. That's when you get into your one A, two A, three A, four A, five A, six A. But during the regular season, you play single A, double A, triple A. So, and this is based on regular season performance. Well, so. See. The man answers the question. I probably need to take you over and buy you your favorite beverage at the batter's box at 43 Hermitage Avenue. Probably go over this weekend and watch all the state championship games and other sports. That's at the batter's box on Hermitage Avenue. Now that that's done, let's get down to the real nitty gritty of why we are here. Mo, we are down to eight ball games stretched over three days. We open with a Division II A championship. That's Thursday, 3 p.m in the first Blue Cross Bowl at Tennessee Tech University in Cookville. And that has Knoxville Webb taking on Evangelical Christian School Webb, 10 and one, ECS, six and six. Some notes for you. Webb beat Donaldson Christian to get here 44 nothing last week. Uh, they did lose their opener 14-7 to Alcoa, an extremely strong team in a, in a nice class in the, uh, in the Division one side of things. They've run, they've reeled off 11 straight wins. Todd Kelly, we told you, Mr. Football, uh, almost a thousand yards rushing, another uh, 183 receiving. Look at this though, 64 tackles, three interceptions. They've been putting up 42 points a game. Defense has given up more than seven only twice all year. You, this Knoxville Web team is a team that has been here before. They didn't get to this point last year, but um, you know traditional power at this level. As you said, they lost their opener to Alcoa. They haven't lost since. Ty Kelly's had a great season for him on both sides of the ball. I think he projects collegiately as a defensive back, as a safety type player. Um, comes from good stock, like you said. A lot of folks in that area are familiar with the name from his dad who played at UT and went on and played in the NFL as well. So um, Todd's going to have a bright future ahead of him and he'd like to leave with a gold ball, I'm sure. They'll be facing Evangelical Christian School, ECS, out of Memphis. And we've talked about them throughout uh, the road to Cookville because they opened up with a bye in Division 2A and a 4-6 and six record. Now, they beat St. George's again, 27-20. St. George was 10-1 and one going into this ball game. They get beat again. Uh, one of the losses kind of uh, I thought was interesting, Maurice, was a forfeit loss. They forfeited a game. So that's uh, it's not like they, they were caught in some kind of infraction because then it would be vacated. 
and it was just one game. For some reason, they didn't they didn't play somebody. And I, I wasn't aware of that actually. I'm I'm not sure exactly what took place with that. Um, you know, for I better or for find that out either, yeah, yeah, for better or for worse, you know, ECS is out of the Memphis area. It's a Division Two A. You know, we haven't had the most competitive Division Two A uh, programs in the area the last little bit. So. Um, didn't delve as much into that situation as probably we should have, but um, what you got to like about this ECS team is, as you've got up there, they've got t they had two Mr. Football finalists. The quarterback Br Brent Rooker um, has thrown and run for about 2,900 yards. He's going to Mississippi State on a baseball scholarship, um, and the linebacker Walker Jones was a nominee as lineman of the year. He is going to sign with Alabama. Um, following in the, it's it's kind of become a a family tradition for the Jones family. He He's got um, two younger, two older brothers, excuse me, that have played at Alabama as well. And um, 6'2", 240, he looks like he's going to be a pretty good fit at that level as well. That ain't bad. This is a team that's won their first two playoff games by a combined score, 62 to 10. Now, this week, something special for you. Maurice and I are going to pick the champions. You ready for this one? Maurice is taking Knoxville Webb, 35-21. I'm going with Webb. 31-21. Interesting. We're pretty close on that one. I, I just think that Webb may be a little bit more explosive than, than ECS is going to be able to handle. Um, we talked about Todd Kelly on, on offense and defense. They've also got um, Aaron Blantz, who has rushed for nearly a thousand yards for him, and and they're a run first defense, but but um, run first offense, but it's all predicated on speed. And um, they've got some guys that when they get to the edge, they can take it to the house. That's the Division II Class A game. Let's look at the Double A game that will be played Thursday night, 7 p.m. University School of Memphis, Memphis University School, 10 and 2 against Densworth, 12 and 0. Kind of a surprise, I think, for Memphis University School to be there. Uh, Brentwood Academy, based on seedings, probably should be there. But MUS gets there with an unbelievable 46-45 comeback win two weeks ago. Really unbelievable. Yeah. Brentwood Academy was up 23 nothing in that ball game at one point and um, from all accounts the, the Eagles just kind of fell apart yeah. for lack of a better word. They, they just kind of couldn't execute coming down the stretch. Blew a 23 point lead and um, MUS kicked a field goal late to win it. Now this is not the first time that uh, MUS and Ensworth have met. They played in the very first game of the year that Ensworth won 35 to 28. They had their own set of Mr. Football finalists uh, in Lyman Peyton Klawinski and Jordan Rogers, their quarterback, over 2,000 yards throwing. This is a team that won a title in four, five, eight, and nine. Now for Ensworth, they got here by beating MBA 35 to seven. They are the two-time defending champions. You notice they took over the streak when the Memphis University School streak ended. Uh, this current class, seniors, 43 and four overall, 24 and one over the last two years. Not bad, and that one loss was um, to Baylor. Um, they had beaten Baylor in the, um, in the finals in 2010. They had beaten them in the regular season in 2010. And, and I think Baylor was really kind of sitting and waiting for them when they went to Chattanooga last year. Kind of sent shockwaves across the state, but that was the one in the last 25 that they've lost this year. Now, of course, we talked about Corn Elder, the year Mr. Football for the second time uh, so far this year, 2,200 yards rushing, 33 touchdowns. He just kind of does it all for him. He He's a guy that, that if you don't stop him, you don't have a chance against Ensworth, and, and it's tough stopping him, obviously. Um, just a game breaker, um, doesn't need much. He, he's got the strength to run through tackles and the, and the speed to run away from him, and he's just, like you said, he's a do-it-all back for them, and he does. One of the guys who will open the holes for him, uh, Mr. Football Lyman finalist, that's Michael Sawyer, 6'2", 275, playing both sides, offense and defense. You know, their offensive line goes unheralded, but but Elder knows what they're oh, yeah. doing up there for sure, and, and they've just gotten it done all year and over the last two years. It, you are, you're an offensive lineman. You know it's a thankless job. But, Boy, um, that's true. But um, 
those guys are, are really solid up there, and, and they do a lot of different things up there and really cause some defenses, some fits. No surprises here on the picks. Maurice takes Ensworth 37-28. I think the defense will be a little bit better. I'm taking Ensworth 44 to 13. You know, next week when we come back for the wrap-up show, we're going to wind up going through these. I'm not going to say where, but there's only one place we disagree <laughs> in all eight games. So someone will be eating crow next week. Or, or we may both be eating a lot. <laughs> well, that's true. Before it's done, we may both eat a whole lot. All right, that is the Division II lineup for Thursday. When we come back on the road to Cookville, we'll take a look at Friday's action, which is Class A, Class 3A, and Class 5A as the nightcap. All that and more coming up. Stay with us. Microcasting for your city. Talk up with us. From the family grocery hauler to fire-breathing racing engines, the one name you need to know is USA Motor & Machine, located at 51 Cleveland Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. Give them a call at 615-726-3725 or at usamotorandmachine.com. And welcome back, everybody, to the Road to Cookville. Joe Williams and my special guest, Maurice Patton, as we take a look at the state championship games and the TSSAA. These are now the Blue Cross Bowls. Uh, Blue Cross has been a very good uh, partner for the TSSAA over the last few years. Um, Got to give them a shout out for doing a good job with that as they play in Cookville. Tennessee Tech, I think, in the Cookville area, very glad to have these games as they've rotated over the years. Uh, you know, Murfreesboro had them before this. Years ago, when there weren't so many divisions, we played all three. There are only three classifications. We played them all at Vanderbilt on the same day. Yeah, and um, I think between the fact that Vanderbilt was a grass grass field, yeah. it, it became a little unwieldy as as the thing got bigger. And and Murfreesboro had just they had just finished the new stadium over at MTSU and it was a really good fit at that time and and as you said Cookville has really embraced this situation here over the last three years going into the fourth fourth year of it this time around. Both of those both Murfreesboro and Cookville have been great hosts over the years. Uh, Vanderbilt's field of course has gone from turf to grass to turf. I remember one year uh, going out and the first thing the junior chamber had to do was scrape the ice off the turf. They were out there with, with spades trying to get the ice, but that was years ago, who cares? Let's take a look at the Class A game. We're worried about 2012, and in the championship game in 2012, this will be Friday at 11 o'clock, it's Huntington, the Mustangs at 12 and two, taking on a 12 and one Gordonsville team. Boy, this ought to be a great one. Huntington beat Nashville Christian to get here 35 to seven. Now, Maurice, they're a number three seed. They've had to play every week, but they are averaging 46 points per game in the playoffs. Yeah. Um as we talked about a few weeks ago, the top the top two seeds in each of the quadrants in in Class A and in Class 2A both got buys. Huntington, with that three seed, has had to play, like you said, each of those first four rounds and and survived it. I think um, there aren't a lot of non one or two seeds in this thing. Gordonsville was yeah. a one seed in their quad, and they advanced all the way through. So. Um, you know, kudos to them for, for su surviving that gauntlet and getting here. And, and most of it they've done behind their quarterback, Jacob Warbritton, who's going, those numbers there are regular season numbers. He has got over 2,900 rushing yards, and he's going to have a shot on Friday at breaking the single season rushing record that was just set last year by, um, by Powell's Dashaun Mobley of, of 3,068 yards. He's upwards of 29, I think he's got 29.44, something like that. Um, had 218 yards and two touchdowns in the win over Nashville Christian. So um, he's definitely a guy that Gordonsville's got to keep in check. This is a crew that has played uh, what has been rated at the third toughest schedule in Class A in the state. Nine ranked opponents and they won seven. That ought to tell you they were ready to go. They've, they've been ready every week. Um, Young coach out there, Eric Swenson's done a great job with this bunch. I think they made it to the semifinals last year, and they've, they've taken that next step. And um, I think they're going to be a handful for Gordonsville. They run a um, run the old single wing. Uh, there will oh. be some be some football purists that will be really excited about seeing this when they just snap it to Warburton, and he goes for the most part. Interesting how these things come around in cycles. Won't be long, we'll see the veer back. Maybe the wishbone. <laughs> no. Uh, Gordonsville, let's talk about them for a minute. They defeated Coalfield 39-15 to get here. They lost their opener to rival Smith County. 
heartbreaker, 28-27. That's one they'd love to have back. Now they're on a 12-0 and run, and uh, they have their own Mr. Football candidate, not just candidate, but winner, and Tyler Cohen, 6'3", 255, offensive and defensive tackle. That's pretty good size at that level, 6'3", 255, and um, he's been a key to their offense in particular. They've got a couple of 1,000-yard rushers. The quarterback, Peyton Watson, has got about 1,300, 1300 yards. The tailback, Kalen Kaysen, has got about 18 to 1,900 yards. So, so they both these teams are coming in with the intent of running the football and um, running it behind Tyler Cohen at one tackle and Cody Payne at the <laughs> other one, and um, they can move some folks. When you see 68 pancake blocks in a season for a tackle, you, 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 we're talking pancake blocks are exactly what they sound like. You made the defensive man a pancake. That's impressive. You flattened him. Yeah. <laughs> now, how do we think this game is going to end on Friday morning? We're both taking Gordonsville. Maurice says 27-21. I say 26-19. Amazing just how, how close that one is. Talking to both the coaches, they both expect it to be a physical ball game. Obviously, it's going to be a run-oriented ball game. Um, and I just think Gordonsville's diversity. I think they can throw the ball a little bit more maybe than Huntington will. And and if they can draw those guys up a little bit, they might be able to get a pl big play over the top that may make the difference. At 3 o'clock Friday afternoon in Class AAA, a rematch of last year's contest. Christian Academy in Oxville, 13-1, taking on Milan 12-2. CAK wins last year, 49-14. to How did CAK get here? Knoxville got here by defeating Elizabethton, 43-34. We told you earlier, they got both of the Mr. Football trophies in Class AAA. They scored 40 or more points in 10 games. Milan, on the other hand, beat CPA 16-8. Milan has been a thorn in Middle Tennessee's back for the last five or six years. They'll either beat CPA or they'll beat Fairview or somebody down the line. They've just been tough. Milan, the Bulldogs, fourth toughest schedule in the state. Both of their losses combined 12 points. And one of their losses is to a team that we'll be talking about later here. Um, lost to Covington, a 4A finalist. Um, other loss was to a county rival, South Gibson. So um, can't really fault them in either of those losses. It's just football sometimes. But they definitely have their credentials. They've got their pedigree, certainly deserve to be here. Um, traditionally, one of the West Tennessee football powers that you mm -hmm. tend to talk about this time of year. Talk a little bit about CAK real quick. Charlie High, Maurice gave the number. Brett Kendrick, their uh, offensive tackle, defensive end that uh, won it, graded out 93%. Those are huge numbers. That's Those are big numbers. So is that 65290? Yeah. That's a big that's number true. as well. I think that's a number that UT kind of liked about him. He's committed to them. Um, and seems even with the coaching change, he, is, he seems to be – holding firm to that commitment and planning on staying at home. And so he'll be right there at home. By the way, Charlie High, we talked about, he owns six state passing records. Five of those records place him in the top ten all-time nationally. You were talking about he doesn't mind throwing the ball. He'll, he'll sling it. How are we picking this one? Interesting. We're both taking Christian Academy in Knoxville. 34-22, says Maurice. 22-15 is what I'll take. Um, I'm pretty solid here, but if Milan were to sneak in there and pull something off, I don't think I'd be that surprised. You know, like like you said, and like we've said, Milan is a team that they're very senior dominated. They've got 10 seniors starting on each side of the ball, really playing with a sense of urgency from the standpoint that they don't have another yeah. shot. Got here last year, feel like they got a little embarrassed in this ball game, and you know, I, I went to school with some guys from Milan a long time ago, and um, th those are guys that you don't want to irritate too much. Exactly. So um, it could be an interesting ball game. I, I would not be surprised to see Milan win this thing. We go to the 5A contest. That's Friday night, 7 o'clock. This will be prime time as Columbia Central 12 and 2 goes back to the state title game to face Beach at 14 and 0. The Buccaneers trying to roll up that perfect season. Columbia got here by beating Powell 32-27. They were the Class A champs in 10, runners-up in 9, missed last year, and they're back now. For Beach, they defeated Jackson Northside, a very good team, 64-31. We'll talk about that here in a second. We told you about Jalen Hurd, the Mr. Football winner that they had. 
They're currently 1-0 and in state championship games. And, uh, Maurice, one of the things you and I have talked about throughout the high school season is running up the scores. Uh, for just because you can or because the numbers got big or whatever. 64-31, one of the things we've always talked about, though, is you got to go back and look at how. And when I went back and looked at the Beach, the final 28 points, I think it was, that Beach put on the board, two-yard runs by somebody new, a 19-yard interception return, things like Those things are going to happen. Sometimes things just get away from you if you're the other team, and it's not necessarily the winning team running it up. This thing was yeah. a dogfight yeah, early. early on. Yeah. And, you know, Beach finally got it rolling. Northside cracked in a couple of spots, and, and all of a sudden you get 64-31 on the road. Yeah. So um, I, I think Beach felt like they were in, in, a, in a battle for 48 minutes, and, and that was what they got out of it. I, I don't think that there was um, – any intent to, to run it up. Yeah. And, and again, they are so explosive. They scored big points the week before in their win over Northeast. Um, so, so this is a team that can put some points up. Now the scary part is, if Columbia Central can find a way to corral Jalen Hurd, you kind of wonder, after, even after giving up 31, can the beach defense rise to the occasion? Because Columbia can be pretty explosive in their own right. They can. They've got they've got a guy that can throw it in Matthew Markham and some guys that can catch it and, and nice running game as well. Now, how, how confident are we in those comments? Look at this. We're both taking beach. Maurice, 35-31 in a close one. You think it's going to be close? I do, for the reasons we just talked Talk about. about. Yeah, Columbia's got enough offense that if Beach cracks defensively, I think Columbia can take advantage. I want to go 28-14 because I think Beach will uh, look at last week's tapes and go, man, we got to tighten up. But we'll see how that comes out. Those are our first five divisions. There are three more to go as we go to Cookville this week for the Blue Cross Bowl and state championships. When we come back, we'll look at class 2A, 4A, and of course, the granddaddy, 6A. All that coming up on the road to Cookville. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. Today's show is brought to you by locally owned and operated Highland Rem Speedway. Highland Rem Speedway is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year with great short track door-to-door -door stop car racing in a safe, family-friendly atmosphere. Visit their website at highlandrim.com. And welcome back, everybody, to the Road to Cookville. I'm Joe Williams, along with my special guest, Maurice Patton, as we get ready for the Blue Cross Bowl. I want to say a special hello to our friends out of USA Motor Machine over on Cleveland. If it's your regular car that you drive every day, we sometimes refer that to as a daily driver. Or if you're into the race car business, they can handle that. Anything in between, go see our friends at USA Motor and Machine. Maurice, uh, hopefully all the motor work is done so the folks can drive to Cookville this weekend because on Saturday we start early again with our final three state championship games. Saturday, 11 a.m., the Blue Cross Bowl for Class AA. Friendship Christian, 12-1, facing Adamsville at 12-1. Friendship having a short drive. Adamsville might want to pack a lunch and leave now. It might not be a bad idea. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how you get to, to Cookville from Adamsville. I, I imagine they've kind of got it mapped out, though, at this point. Friendship Christian defeated Chattanooga Boy Buchanan 27-6 in their semifinal contest. They did have a Mr. Football finalist. That's Tanner Martin, 6'5", 225, offensive guard linebacker. He graded out at 91% on offense, 62 tackles. He's a four-year starter, so he's got experience. Adamsville beat their old friend Dresden 28-7. Interesting note, this is only the third team in school history at Adamsville to make a state championship final contest. The uh, basketball and baseball teams, both state runners up in 1995. Kind of makes you think there was just a, a group of kids that came through together that played well together. Exactly. In a, in a, in a small school situation like that, you, you find situations where athletes play a lot of the same sports. Same thing with friendship last year. They're the defending 2A champs in football. They went on and won the basketball championship last year as well, and they had a great group of athletes, and, and some of those guys were juniors who are back this time around. Tanner Martin's a guy who um, who started at linebacker for them last year, moved over to offense this year, and graded out at 91% for the season. Um, pretty quick study over there, apparently. That's a scary thought. Yeah. So you got to be smart. you got to think on offense. Defense, eh. 
<laughs> find the football and go get it. Here's the way we're picking these con this contest. Maurice is taking Friendship Christian 31-20, and I'm with him. But at 35-14, I think their experience from last year just gives them a little bit more of an edge. And I think their X factor is their quarterback. Last year, they kind of did quarterback by committee. We've talked about this kid this year. A.J. Long's a junior, yeah. transferred in here from Pennsylvania, had some big numbers, and has pretty much reprised those. Um, thrown for 30 plus touchdowns, I think two picks all year, really taking good care of the ball, can throw it downfield as a dual threat with his feet as well, and I think he can put a lot of pressure on this Adamsville defense. Let's take a look at the second game of the day, 3 o'clock. It is the 4A contest, Knoxville Fulton at 12-2 and two versus an undefeated Covington Chargers squad at 14-0. and 0. What do we know about them? Well, Knoxville Fulton got here by defeating Giles County 41-27. to 27. They've been here before. Champs in three, four, and six, runners up in two and seven. They had a nice little run in there. And their coach, Rob Black, in his second year as head coach, is a former player at the school. So you know there's a lot of emotion going through him right now. Covington put the hurt on Liberty Tech 34 to 14, and they had their own Mr. Football finalist in Johnston White, uh, 5'10, 175 running back and safety. I got the chance to see Fulton last week in that win against Giles County, and they are a very physical, very athletic ball club. Um, got a running back, a junior, um, Daryl Rollins, who scored three touchdowns all from 50-plus yards. So if that kid gets the corner, he if if he's even, he's leaving. I, I, he's um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was amazing to watch. He rushed for over 300 yards the other night, and, and he's a game breaker, and they're going to get him the ball a lot. So um, that's something Covington's going to have to deal with. Covington, I saw last year in the semifinals against Maplewood, that was a very junior-dominated team this year. All those kids are seniors. They've taken that next step. They're going to have their hands full against this Fulton bunch. Like I said, Rollins. They are very active on defense. Their linebackers do a great job in dropping back in coverage. They really gave Giles County a bunch of different looks. Um, Giles County had committed, I think, maybe four turnovers all year. They had six against Fulton the other night, and six turnovers in the state semifinals yeah. <laughs> doesn't lead to you going to the finals usually. No. So. And my theory was if the, whoever whoever won the Fulton Giles County game, I thought would be state champs, and that's basically I think the way we almost called it. You've got it Fulton 37-24. I kind of jumped the other way and went Covington 24-21. Don't know why. Cannot give. It's one of those. It's just a gut pick. Can't give you any reason for it. Okay. Sometimes those gut picks are enough, though. But like I said. I, I may, maybe Fulton just made a lasting impression on me having just seen them a few days ago, but I, I, I really like them. Like you said, they play with some emotion, and I think that kind of starts at the top with Coach Black. Um, relatively young guy, you know, don't, don't let the gray hair fool you. Yeah. Um, seems to relate to those kids really well, and they, they really play hard for him. I'm wondering if they're going to be too high coming off that big win. Got to get around the corner to get there. Speaking of corners, don't forget our friends at Highland Rim Speedway up in Ridgetop. They'll be opening back up for the 2013 season before long. Stay, stand by. Hopefully, we'll have some information for you later on the rules meetings, et cetera. The final game of the night and of the, of the year, I guess, the 6A title. What we call the granddaddy, the, the real Blue Cross Bowl. Not to offend anybody. Be careful. I know, but this is... Uh, <laughs> This is the one. It's Maryville at 14-0 against Memphis Whitehaven at 14-0. A rematch of last year's game that Maryville won 23-7. And you know the folks in Memphis have been pointing at this since the day after the loss last year. Probably that night. Yeah. Yeah. Some things that you might not know, Maryville defeated Siegel 47-43 despite that unbelievably inspiring uh, performance by Brent Stockstill of the Stars. They hold 13 golden balls. That's the most in the state. They held a set, uh, just a history piece I, I happen to remember. They were 74 and 0 back in 2008. Uh, they were they had the second longest winning streak in the nation. The team that had the longest lost their state championship game on Friday night. M Maryville went to play on Saturday night and got beat by Hillsborough. <laughs> and they no longer, you know, for. 22 hours, they held the longest winning streak in the nation. But in all honesty, this is their 14th trip 
to a state championship game in the last 16 years, and they are 10 and four. So they know what to do when they get there. It is hard to argue with the Red Rebels. Yep. Whitehaven beating Mount Juliet 41 to 35 at another great contest. Now they had their own Mr. Football finalist. We told you about Mark Dodson, 5'10", 190. Uh, I think it, it's either the, he set the and single year record this year or it's the career record, but he's got over 6,000 yards for his career and is now a whole record holder in Memphis. I think he probably set them both, probably both the single season and the career record in Memphis. And um, just a great back. Um, got past the Mount Juliet team that they, they blistered pretty good last year at Mount Juliet, 44 to 10. This one was a little bit closer, but they managed to pull it out. Um, they've got SEC prospects all over oh, yeah. the field. Um, really a bunch of great athletes. Rod, uh, Rodney Salisbury has done a great job coaching that team and, and that program. He's in his ninth year there, and um, I think he's won like 80-something games already. So um, they have been consistently solid down there. Maryville, um, like you said, they, they survived against Siegel, and um, that that's a program that just reloads. They um, Their quarterback from last year, Pat and Robinette, signed with Vanderbilt, graduated in December, got there, went through spring practice, and was listed has been listed on the depth chart most of the season. I think if they had had an injury at the quarterback spot, they probably would have went with him. But I think they've been pretty glad to be able to redshirt him this year. But um, to lose an SEC signee at quarterback and and just reload the way they have really really tells you what kind of program they've got. George Quarles, the coach at Barrable, uh, every time there's a new college opening, he winds up getting mentioned. They've they even started in Knox Knoxville week or two ago, you know, it makes for good fodder. It, it's a lot of fun to talk about. Well, he's 193 and 13, I think, going into this ball game. I, you got to kind of wonder what motivates him at this level, what drives him, or what's going to be his next step. You, you can't think if he continues to have this kind of success that he's going to retire at Maryville. So um, it's one of those things, you throw enough stuff against the wall, something's going to stick at some point. Eventually. Now, how do we see this one, the last game of the year? We're both taking Maryville. Maurice says 28-26 in, in a close one, which is what you've been saying for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to take it in a close one, but with a little more offense, 45-39. I think both of these teams can light the scoreboard up. I think you're right. I, I, you know, I, I think their defenses are going to step up just enough to kind of slow each other down a little bit. but. You know, you, you could see that happening as well. That's the way we've got them picked. We will find out this weekend, fr Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the Blue Cross Bowls in Cookville, Tennessee, on the campus of Tennessee Tech University. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got one more edition of the Road to Cookville coming up. We'll probably call that the road away from Cookville because everything will be finished. But Maurice and I will be back next week to tell you who the happy eight teams are in the state of Tennessee. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week on The Road to Cookville. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis.